Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to the panel on attention. We're going to move quickly, um, and I just want to run through a very quick exercise, and I'm going to ask you all to follow along to what I'm about to say. Please, everybody in the room, can you stand up? Now, look at me and look at the panel. We now have your attention. This is called active attention, narrow beam attention. Now, all please sit back down. Grab your phones out of your pocket. Everybody here has got a phone and look at the weather. What's the weather going to be like today? Now, as you do this, we've moved from active to passive. Your attention has shrunk a little bit. <coughs> While your phones are out, please take a picture of this panel because you're going to want to post afterwards. We're all going to stand here. Phones up. Take a picture. Social media. Three, two, cheese. Brilliant. Now, the last thing I'm going to ask you to do is to turn to somebody that you don't know and introduce yourself. There's lots of people here. Just turn around and do that very quickly. Say hello. Now, everyone's lost their attention. No one's listening to me. I'm now, I could be moonwalking. Okay, let's stop. Attention back on me. Now, I want you to remember the different types of attention that I've shown you. And also remember, the entire time that we were going through this process, this panel was 100% viewable. <laughs> now, I'm here with a team of experts to talk about attention. I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves and explain why the wonderful people out here should listen to their expertise on attention. Over to you. Thanks, Alex. <clears throat> that was the best introduction to an attention panel that I've ever been on. I'm going to steal that. Uh, I'm Mark Goldeman. I'm the founder and CEO of Adelaide. Uh, we're the leading attention metric vendor. We use attention metrics to estimate the probability of attention and the probability of outcomes. Um, yeah. Morning, everyone. Uh, so I'm Phil. I work at Halion. Uh, Halion may not be familiar to you. It's uh, formerly GSK Consumer Healthcare. Uh, we're celebrating our one-year birthday in a few days, so uh, feel free to send a cake or a card. Um, the brands are very familiar to you, I'm sure, Centrum, Zenstein, Panadol, etc. Um, I work in our insights analytics team globally. My specialism is around marketing effectiveness, digital marketing effectiveness, and a result, part of that is metrics and methods. Ergo, a big focus on attention and how it can help our marketers to, to drive more business outcomes from their media investments. I'm Stephanie Hodgson. Hello, everyone. So I'm um, Global Data and Analytics Director at Mediacom, working for Mars. Um, and the reason why attention is super important to us because we, and we come to that point later because we think it might be a really good proxy to help us to improve the business outcomes from a media perspective. Brilliant. So we have a team of experts here. And the question now on everyone's mind is why is Alex Cheeseman from Outbrain sitting here talking about attention? The answer to that is um, Outbrain for the past 15 years has been helping use AI to predict what to read next on some of the biggest publishers on the planet. We, we're very good at driving engagement and of course engagement when you're deeply involved in something, you're, you're, you're paying attention to it. So we have this incredibly powerful data set and knowledge and we're incredibly proud today at ATS London to announce that we're launching a brand new product called Onyx, O-N-Y-X. It's exclusive placement. It's on 100% brand safe environments. It's high impact display and video. And of course, it's high attention. So I encourage everybody after this panel, when you've understood why attention is so important, to come to the booth and have a quick preview of the first people in the UK to see it. Now, back to the panel, back to the experts. Um, attention, I, I listen, everyone's talking about attention, but, but what, what really is it in the terms of online environment? Um, Steffi, over to you, what, and why does it matter? I think you made a really good point earlier. So I think I, I look at attention as a potential evolution of the idea and the concept behind viewability. You just make the point of being 100% viewable. Um, so from that lens, if viewability measures if an ad has been served on a specific device, I think attention offers the opportunity to really understand if it's been seen by a human person. And um, 
through that it matters because it has the opportunity to become the new industry standard and metric to evaluate media quality. Phil? Um, one of the core principles in the insights analytics team that I work in is deeper human understanding. And for us, intention is really exciting because viewability, media metrics that have been available to date prior to attention becoming um, accessible, even though it's still nascent, is that it starts to give us a better sense of what's happening behind the screen. So as you pointed out, 100% viewability is all very well and good, but it has no connectivity to the actual response that's being generated by that media placement. And that's why we're so interested in it, and that's why we've been kind of testing and learning with it for a couple of years now, to make sure that we better understand the people that are being exposed to advertising and not just being super comfortable knowing that, hey, we hit a certain viewability target, or we were able to deliver X amount of impressions or views, getting behind that and starting to understand, okay, the relationship between that and outcomes. Um, which I think we're going to talk about later, but the way I explained it once internally is it's a bridge between what we used to measure and what we ultimately want to measure. Um, so yeah, that's why we've been focused, I say, for a couple of years now on experimenting and, and partnering with a lot of people in the space to, to get closer to those outcomes. Yeah, I think that's a perfect framing, what you both did, because the, the, evo like, the industry needs to move beyond viewability, but it, like the, the textbook definition of attention it's like the duration of gaze or the duration of focus. And that's not really a good measure of media quality. So I think we need to unpack attention into its different elements, understand how it impacts media, how it impacts creative, and what you can learn from audience about attention. I think it's really, really exciting to see you guys launch this product because one of the goals of having really thoughtful metrics is to start to change behavior in the market. And this is the, a prime example of that, right? This is a new product. You've seen the market, you've responded to it, and now you're offering something which is high attention. Brilliant. Thank you, Mark. And, and, and I suppose the, the, the theme there, right, is that you know, viewability doesn't necessarily mean that something has been viewed. And it certainly doesn't mean that attention has been passed it. I think Bill Birnbeck says it really nicely. You know, if nobody sees your advertising, then everything's academic, right? And from your perspective, Mark, how do you go about measuring attention? How do we do it? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I, I think we measure the probability of attention, which is a little bit different than just measuring the duration of attention. Um, we bring in eye tracking data, we bring in device signals, we bring in outcome data, we blend it all in using machine learning algorithm, and like I said, we try to predict the probability of attention by any person to any creative in a placement, and then the subsequent probability of an outcome. It's really, really important to think about attention, to like unpack attention, because if you just optimize to the most attention, you're gonna introduce some really weird biases around audiences, and around creative. If you hear someone talk about attention time or attention seconds, they're talking about the duration of gaze. And it's, you, you end up targeting older people, you end up targeting people that already know about your brand because those people actually pay more attention than people that don't know about your brand. And you might end up making some weird creative decisions because the creative that captures the most attention is not necessarily the creative that does the most work. And I think in, in that industry, so what you said, I think it is super important, and you made that in, in the intro at that point, Alex. So it's having a think about of, do we, of what kind of attention do we talk about? Is it active attention? Is it passive attention? Because it's so mixed up in the, in the words and in, in the language within the industry. So I, I do think it's when we think and talk about attention, we need to be super clear about, do we think about active attention? Do we, think, do we talk about passive attention, which is in many cases just an equivalent of better kind of viewability. I, I do think it is whenever someone's talking about attention, ha, be super clear on what do we mean with that. Yeah, I, th I think it's important. Every single organization needs to have their own definition of what attention means, right? How they want to be measuring it and ultimately how that drives business income because business outcome, because there's no point in having something if it doesn't deliver some form of results at an efficient effective cost and what why why aren't pro the proxies that we're using today enough to measure attention and what i mean by proxies view through rate completion rate view, why why aren't they why aren't they enough mark to give us a real view of attention 
Oh, I mean, they're just imperfect metrics, right? But they have the, the expected outcome, right? If you optimize towards viewability today, you get tiny ads on big screens. And if you optimize towards video completion rate, you get tiny video players on big screens. So I don't think it's that surprising. And I think it actually speaks to the need to have a market-driven metric rather than sort of a, like a fiat or a sort of a standards-driven metric because you'll never, like once a standard is set, it makes it really hard to adjust and to sort of counter the inevitable gaming that happens in the market once the supply side understands a, a metric or a currency. And, and Phil, how are you approaching measurement and what are some of the kind of hurdles that you've had when looking at attention with the activity that you're running? And then Steffi, I'll ask the same question afterwards. Um, so I said, we've been doing it for probably 18 months, two years, and we've made a lot of mistakes, uh, which is fine because that's the idea of experimenting. If you're not failing, then you're probably doing something wrong and probably not stretching yourself. So um, for certain campaigns, we're applying in-flight measurement. So we're wrapping as you would with viewability, wrapping tags um, to enable kind of a vendor, a third party, to able to give us a view on um, the probable attention, which is really important. In a privacy-safe world, you wouldn't feel comfortable if every single time you looked at a device, you were being monitored. So um, it is based on models and algorithms and ma machine learning and um, that's really important to, un to educate stakeholders on as well, because you say it's attention and people just assume it's, oh, eye tracking and you've monitored every single impression. That must be costly and a bit weird. So making those definitions are really clear. Um, and that's helpful because for those big campaigns, you want to maybe optimize, you want to take decisions in flight and understand. But then simultaneously, we've also been auditing ourselves, looking at historical data sets on a periodic basis. And almost that's been the most useful because we're all jumping in and we're assuming we don't have enough attention or we're, we're bad at attention. You, you don't even know before you start measuring, before you start getting the benchmarks, comparing yourselves against other verticals, making sure that you understand that picture. And yes, it could be time, it could be you know a, another unit, but benchmarking ourselves has been the most important thing we've done so far to understand where the problems are um, and where the hotspots and the headroom is for growth. So is it you know, a bigger problem in Brazil? Is that a cultural issue? Is that a creative problem? Is that the way we're buying media? And going after the problems rather than just trying to go straight to the US, straight to Germany, straight to Australia, and getting them to buy in because they're the first adopters. They're probably not the first places you should be trying to apply attention measurement to improve performance. Can you share a bit more about the, the benchmarking? Because that's really, I think that's a really important piece. Is there anything else you can share? Um, so we work sorry, quite a lot with Lumen, um, and they're able to benchmark, uh, they're able to share uh, APM benchmarks, so attention per thousand impressions, um, and able to provide that for um, their whole database of clients. And much would you like with viewability or with kind of click-through rates and things, you, you're looking for opportunity of, of headroom. The really interesting thing is if you get 10 extra an increase of 10 APM on a, on a campaign, maybe you do an A-B test of a BAU strategy versus an attention optimized one, you get an extra 10 APM. That's 10 extra seconds per thousand impressions. That's spread out across a thousand people. A tenth of a second, a hundredth of a second for every person. How much difference is that really going to make in their buying decision around toothpaste? It's minimal and you know, it's tiny. So I think that's another thing about understanding the consumer in all this. Like the metrics are cool, the technology is great, but from the perspective of the consumer, that's nothing. That's not going to move the needle on your business. That's not going to change anything. So again, putting people at the heart of this and not just going, cool new metric, cool new methodology, let's just start using it without really thinking. Thank you, Phil. And Stevie, talk to us a little bit about kind of how you've approached measurement and some of the challenges or hurdles you may have faced? Yeah, sure. So a couple of years ago, we've um, started in, in understanding or kind of them trying to understand the impact of attention on content and operationalize that in a, in a product that even helps us to do pre-testing. Um, what we started now is um, running, and similar as you just described, doing A-B testing to understand if attention is correlating to um, a business outcome and in that perspective really the sales so a top a top line growth a short term perspective um, so we've seen on that one some some really good first results from an incremental lift i think the challenge will probably be is then if you add the 
tech costs on top to that. Um, does that still deliver high ROI, or is it just um, delivering a good lift and but not paying off? Are we negotiating on stage about price? <laughs> <laughs> And Mark, talk to us a little bit about some of the work you've done with clients and some, uh, some of the challenges perhaps you faced at the very beginning. So um, all of our work is based around the North Star of outcomes. Like every client we work with, we do A-B testing to prove that optimizing towards media that drives higher probability of attention drives more efficient incremental outcomes. That's like full stop. We don't, we don't do anything without that. I think that the challenges that we face are two prongs. One is the inertia behind cost and the fact that everybody just focuses on CPM. You can't blame them because a lot of times up the food chain, their incentives are based on driving CPMs down every year. And that's also like just human nature in a market when you don't understand quality, you get really fixated on cost. I think, um, so to address the, the peanut gallery over there, I think one of the problems that, that we have in the attention space is an overfixation on like the academic definition of attention and like the seconds of attention, the duration of attention. T to, to address your example, Phil, like if you get a thousand more seconds or even a hundred more seconds, maybe you are just targeting websites with old people, right? Like there's a, there's a, there's a big problem that people are running into with these duration-based measures, and you can, I think you can define it around Goddard's law, right? The amount of attention that people pay to things is all is like 99% of the time directionally connected with outcomes, but when you start optimizing to it, it stops becoming an efficient measure. That's what Goddard's law is. So I think that the the biggest challenge is around inertia, and then around people maybe using definitions of attention that are academically correct, but in operation create poor incentives. Got it. And, and, and Phil, can you talk a little bit about the process that you went through to introduce attention and get buy-in and stakeholders kind of involved with this is something that we should consider as a business? So we're very lucky. <coughs> Excuse me. Simon Peel, our global head of media, has come from Adidas Reebok and He's been a big proponent of media quality and attention for a while, so we were fortunate in that we didn't really have to do much selling. It was um, more about operationalizing that across you know, 100 markets and you know, three big regions and lots of categories and brands. And that has been the real challenge, but that's no different to operationalizing a test and learn program in any large business. You know, bottom up, top down, buy in, you know, consistency, all those things. Uh, this is no different, and we don't see it as any different. I think. We have five main test and learn pillars for media. And this is not attention in, in addition to like um, diversity and inclusive um, representation of media, as you were, would have heard Tom Mills, our uh, global investment lead, talking about yesterday, is not a true false hypothesis. It's not do we do attention or not. It's not do we invest in DEI or not. It's more nuanced and complicated than that. It's how much attention do we currently garner? How much more can we get? How much headroom is there? And what is the incremental, incrementality that's going to drive for us? And, and positioning it really clearly that you, know, you used to do incrementality tests on viewability. Now this is just an, increment, an incrementality test on attention. Is it best to use in-flight optimization to garner that extra attention? Is it best to do pre-planning? So actually you just um, create an inclusion list of higher attention websites, such as the Outbrain's new wonderful Onyx that is going to be available very soon, I'm told, Alex. Um, God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. So that, that's how we're approaching it. We're, we're not approaching it in any different way to test and learn in our business, any other pillar, any other work stream, any other variable. It's just explaining it to people that we're here as a global team to support you, and we believe this is a step forward in measurement and optimization. And the people that naturally lean in will lean in, but it's much easier to go to someone like with the uh, conversation previously about uh, sustainability and carbon. Here's the problem. We're offering you a solution rather than, hey, we just want to do a, a test and maybe we'll see what happens. That, that's very unlikely to get you much buy-in without a lot of arm wrangling. And what's been your approach, Steffi? I mean, you, you mentioned you've run a few pilots, you're still looking at the results, but what's, what's your kind of recommendation to the people here if they want to start to you know, explore attention as a potential factor in their campaigns? H how should they start or go about that? What would be your advice and recommendations? Yeah, I think it's first 
having a clear perspective on what do we want to use it for. So um, what is, how does it tie to the business objectives and to the business outcomes that, that you as a business want to drive forward? And then um, create the thesis and then set out, as you, and you mentioned that as well, so just what, do a simple A-B testing, uh, define, look at what is the number of sufficient evidence points, of su sufficient data points that you can feel comfortable with, and then just run a, a I mean, that's how we've done it, is simple A-B testing to understand does it really drive the impact, and then um, does it really deliver a higher, a higher incremental outcome, and then can we use it for planning purpose, for optimization purpose, um, but I think that's be super clear on what do you want to use it for and then set out um, an A-B test and control approach to understand does it, does it do a better job versus business as usual. Yeah, I, I love it. Have, have a clear goal in mind, right? Um, Mark, you've clearly got a, a lot of experience here. What's, you know, for the people again in the room, why Adelaide and how should someone get started with attention? I don't, I don't want to give too much of a sales pitch. We didn't, uh, so. Why Adelaide? I think that we're focused on probability of tension. Like, I think I've, I've sort of beaten that one to death. Um, we, we have 10 years working. We previously ran an ad network called Parsec that actually sold media on a cost per second. So we're intimately familiar with the incentives that are created around the duration of attention, um, how to get started. So I think that it's really important to do an A-B test and to understand the impact on incrementality. But I think what's happened in the past six months is super interesting around programmatic. So I'm sorry to mention another vendor, but yesterday we announced a partnership with Yahoo. <coughs> <coughs> sorry, with another D DSP. And that DSP is making pre-bid segments available. So that, just, that makes it super easy to partition media into high quality and low quality. Um, so I think you can get started with planning, you can get started with measurement, A-B testing, optimizing, and then uh, operationalize it and make activation super easy programmatically. Amazing. Cool. Just, <clears throat> I guess it's an endorsement of what Mark and uh, Stephanie are saying is that those A-B tests are absolutely the way we're going about it. I think it's the importance of understanding what the job to be done of the media is that you're running that A-B test for. And you know, if you're trying to move spontaneous awareness by a few percentage points, that's going to take a lot more attention than maybe, you know, driving short-term sales response and things. So we've had experience of people trying to set up tests to achieve the wrong outcome and expect attention to be the silver bullet that's going to deliver that, and it, it just haven't. So whether that's a sales lift study, a brand lift study, some governance around, you know, managing your expectations about what you expect it to achieve. And before jumping in and go, it's not driving short-term sales. It's like, well, Centrum is a brand where you don't have to buy it once a week, you buy it once a quarter, once a six months, what did you expect was going to happen? You thought there was going to be more short-term sales as a result of that, same with you know, toothpaste and the categories as well. So we're, I think we're a bit different to maybe other advertisers in that you know, our, our lag is longer and we have to factor that in as well before people shoot attention down as having failed. So I'm, con I'm conscious of time and I know that we're at, at, at the break and I know after this every single person here is going to come downstairs to the Outbrain booth and have a look at Onyx but also feel free to chat with us and the panellists, we're all going to be there. I I'd like to close out with just one, one question. We, we, we all know that there's challenges with viewability. Why isn't attention ubiquitous? Why isn't a currency? Why isn't it on every single plan on the planet? And I'll start with you Mark. And, Roll out. I wanted to go last on this one. Uh, so why, why, why is it not everywhere? Well, I think I have one or two salespeople here, and we can take that up later. The, I, the, the, it's, it's about incentives, right? Like, in, like in, a, in a perfect world, everybody would have incentives to drive better business outcomes. But in a lot of environments, especially like a lot of agencies are, are incentivized to drive CPMs down. And that slows people down, because some conversations I have I'm like, listen, the market is inefficient. You can spend 10% more and get 50% better outcomes. And they say, lost you a 10% more. Like, I, my incentives are all to drive CPMs down. So I think as we can move up the food chain into procurement, into the CMO, and help them understand that they can assess quality and they can measure value, I think that the, the tides will start to shift and it will we'll reach a tipping point. Uh, I think the problem is bandwidth. People only have so much time in the day. This conference will have covered I don't know how many topics. 
invariably a lot of the same people will be dealing with those topics, you know, investment in DEI, carbon reduction, attention, et cetera, et cetera. It's, so it's picking your battles and prioritizing where you think you can you know, make the biggest difference. And we're all hu human beings, and we have to do that in our jobs. And uh, also, you know, standardization. Uh, I know, you know there's different opinions on who should lead the standardization of the metric, but um, it's, it's difficult at the moment when there are so many partners. The ARF, I think, is doing a review of all the partners you could work with. There's maybe too many partners too much complexity at the minute for everyone to jump in and we've only spoken about media mainly here we haven't even spoken about creative and using creative to to pre-test and an early test as well so that's another dimension to this angle so you know we're busy and it's it's tricky and can't do everything yeah and i think it's probably it's at least what i've seen it's a it's a combination of both things what you guys just said so it's a having a clear a clear, which is a broader discussion about what is the KPI that we want to drive. Do we have the capability to capture, measure, and optimize, and plan and buy against that specific KPI? Which probably attention may be a, a good solution, right? To say it, it at least helps you to tackle that question of how can I translate a business outcome into a media optimization perspective, and not just looking at CPM. And then from a from a workload perspective, I think. Some of the solutions that are, in, that are out there requires really labor-intensive optimization skills. It's super manual in some cases. Um, so it's then coming back to the point: is is it worth the effort in, in terms of does it really deliver? Does the extra work and the extra cost pay off in better outcomes? It, it may shock you, but Meta, Google, and Amazon all think they're in platform. Bid types are already good enough, so yeah. <laughs> they're, not, they're not running to, to ingest algorithms and other things. It's bizarre that they should have that high opinion. So on, on that wonderful note, I want to thank my panel of experts for a delightful conversation. Um, I'd love everyone to stand up for a standing ovation for these wonderful people. Uh, stand up. <laughs> Big round of applause. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll uh, see you downstairs at the Outbrain booth to discuss Onyx, O-N-Y-X. Thank you very much.